Hello, everybody. Welcome to Holly Randall Unfiltered. I am so excited because Christmas is next week. It's my favorite holiday. So welcome to a special, I don't know, I say it's a special Christmas episode. There's nothing specially Christmassy about it. But um, anyways, happy holidays wherever you are. Uh, before I introduce my guest, um, I just want to give a quick shout out to my sponsors, Rex MD, who could make your Christmas go so much more smoothly by getting you generic and branded Viagra so easily. Everything's online, even the subscription, they deliver right to your door. It's like Santa can just bring you like guaranteed long lasting erections straight to your door and just think about how much holiday fun you could have with that. Um, go to rexmd.com slash holly to get started with a sample pack subscription of generic Viagra. RexMD is the authority in men's telehealth. Okay, let me introduce to you my guest today. Um, she was so committed to joining the porn industry that she commuted back and forth from Hawaii for almost six months. That's a pretty long flight. I recently, uh, I've shot her for Twisty's Treat of the Month, which we can talk about that because that was a <laughs> that was a tough shoot and she was mm -hmm. a champ. Um, and I'm so excited to have her here for you. She's one of the sweetest and just like most genuinely lovely girls in the industry. Welcome, Giselle Blanco. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my gosh, I'm all like gushy and blushy right now because <laughs> of your little intro. Thank you. Um, I'm really happy to be here. Yeah. Finally, have a seat with you. I know you reached out a while ago, it's and okay. you I totally was... ghosted me. It's fine. I know, no. <laughs> Christmas I... ghosted me. <laughs> I know. Goodness. Oh my god. I was doing a little bit of soul searching. That's okay. That's so okay. I was kind of. It was during one of those little breaks. I understand. Yeah. I understand. You know what? We're not always in a place in our lives that we want to go on a podcast and talk about ourselves. Yeah. Sometimes we just really like. That's the last thing that we want to do. We're not in that place. Yeah. No. And I totally get that. Thank you. I you know. I'm so sorry. So, I, no, I'm glad okay. you understand. Yeah. I'm really like not. Like I like, promise it was nothing personal at no, all. No, <laughs> not at all. And here's the thing too. I try to always say this, you know, you guys gift me with your time on this show and I'm so grateful for that. So like, mm -hmm. I'm just grateful for if anybody's willing to come on yeah. and, you know, sit down with me for an hour. I know people are busy. They got other shit to do. And this is, you know something that I just I don't ever want to take like anybody's um company for granted so right. thank you for making the time of course, honestly of course I really I'm glad to be here yay yeah um so like I mentioned uh Christmas is around the corner mm -hmm. um do you love Christmas as much as I do I love Christmas however I gotta say it is second to Halloween Halloween really? is my jam yes I get that I get that mm. I feel like if I was a young, hot, beautiful woman, I would also love Halloween. <laughs> but alas, Halloween, Halloween's actually never been, you know, I liked it, I think, when I was younger. But I don't know, like, get the whole dressing up thing. You mm -hmm. would think that it would be something that I would be really into because yeah. I actually have so much access to makeup, wardrobe, mm -hmm. props. I have, like, accounts at, like, prop rental houses, Right. wardrobe rental places like I could literally be anything like I could make that happen and I yeah. just don't yeah no and I occasionally I'll see like your little themed posts or mm -hmm. themed shoots on um Twitter and yeah Instagram for my only fans. they're super cute but I mean I get it it's a lot it's, it's a it's, lot of planning that goes into it it is yeah. and I don't know for some reason I just I think also now that I'm older I'm like not that into it but what um I mean, what is it about Halloween that you love so much? Is it the dressing up? Yeah, I love the dressing up. I love spooky things. Uh, my favorite movie genre is horror and mm -hmm. thrillers. And um, I also really, really love that me and my partner share that same interest in Halloween or maybe in holidays in general. Mm -hmm. So we're very festive. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. What has been like your favorite costume that you've, do you have like a all time best costume that you've ever done. Oh my goodness. I think my <laughs> it has to be uh this year's Halloween. Um me and my partner, we dressed up as Rhaenyra and Damon Targaryen from oh, House of Dragon. Nice. And we have two puppies and we got them little dragon costumes. Oh my god. So the whole family was like House of Dragon. I love it. 
Do you, you you have a photo that you can show me? Yes, I have a right? show. Right? Okay. Our photo, do you want me to show you now? I mean, sure. Let I kind of like can can't it. wait. No, it, it, was, it was gorgeous. I also like, so for anyone who doesn't know, her partner is Ramon Nomar, yeah. who we have known since he was 18. Mm-hmm. I don't know if uh, you should, I think like one of his very first shoots was with my mom. We used to use Ramon a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, understandable. Yeah. I could probably show you some photo sets of him. <laughs> oh have you seen God. the one of him in like the maid uniform? No. <laughs> oh my God. I got to see it. <laughs> yeah. Him and somebody else. It was with Stacey Valentine. Yeah. And I mean, like he's just in like, a, he's like naked with an apron, but it's pretty. Really? <laughs> oh my God. Wait here. I found it. We were oh my cosplayed gosh. out. <laughs> okay. I love Ramon. He looks a little ridiculous. Oh. You actually look amazing. <laughs> this suits you very, very much. Thank you. I know Ramon. Oh my goodness. Oh my he God. was feeling the wig that day too. Was he? It was gorgeous. Yeah. That is so funny. He Can you like, send this to me? Yeah. I kind of want to like put this into yeah. the video. For like, sure. Edit this photo in. Because yeah. I feel like Everyone else is going to have FOMO by not being no, able to see it. Right, right, right. It's too cute. I'll send you like, because we have another one where we're laughing and our dogs are like, <laughs> my husky's oh my perfectly god. posed. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. I love that. That's great. Right. Here. Okay, you have to send that to me. Yes. Um, so back to Christmas. Yes. What uh, What is it about Christmas that, like, what's your favorite thing about Christmas? So back home in Hawaii, um, we don't have snow. Right. So it would always be rainy. And our version of cold was 70 degrees. <laughs> and I mean, so, I don't know why I laugh. I grew up in L.A. So like it doesn't get that cold here either. But yeah, I don't know. It's I'm pretty funny. I'm dying out here as is. So I don't know. <laughs> it's like 50s, sometimes like 60. The highest a couple of days ago was like 67. I was mm-hmm. still a little chilly, but mm-hmm. grateful because it's a lot warmer than the past couple of days have been. Yeah. But anyways, um, just the the rainy season or the cold season makes you want to just wrap up, snuggle. You know, it's hoodie season. You just want to be cozy at home, watch Christmas movies, drink hot cocoa. Um, and back home, we would make little villages mm-hmm. for um, Christmas. And each year, we'd buy a little uh, addition to it. And so I feel like just doing little small things like... Uh, traditions we'd also do um, an ornament every year Mm -hmm. and add it to our tree so I feel like those little things really make Christmas something to look forward to and just special yeah Yeah. what do you guys do for Christmas do you and Ramon go back and see your family or his family or do you guys stay here so um, this year we're thinking of staying here because I kind of feel bad um, about leaving my puppy because mm-hmm. we ha- now we have two dogs before last year it was just her and um, we had to leave her at doggy daycare while we went home uh, to see my family in Hawaii and um, this year I have my husky my husky she's nine years old and she knows what Christmas is so once the Christmas decorations go up she's aware of it like she acts a little different like it's just something different about her that we've noticed and her favorite thing to do is open presents because we always get our dogs like a little stocking for themselves and we just put all these treats and toys for them and she goes nuts. She I was going to say it. also Huskies love to rip shit up yes. like literally your rugs and dig through your walls. So yeah. it makes sense that that she would like to rip open presents. Right. No, she's so she's a really good puppy though. She doesn't um she doesn't get into our things, mm-hmm. but anything we get her. Mm-hmm torn apart in pieces in two yeah. seconds yeah. so she's a good girl i'm glad i'm glad she is because the little one loves my shoes my chihuahua oh boy <laughs> oh but it's okay yeah those so are replaceable for it. Yes. yes that's true yeah. the love of a dog is not Mm-mm. yeah Mm-mm. so uh giselle let's start uh let's start at the beginning how yeah. did you get into the adult industry Ooh, so i got in um let's see when i turned 18 I decided to start stripping because I thought it was fun. You know, I'm seeing uh, these girls. I think I was, I followed a couple strippers from home um, just because I liked their content, what they posted. I mm-hmm. thought they were posting like just beautiful images and whatnot. And I would watch their stories and I'm like, huh, I, this club seems really cool. The club that she works for uh, was 
a very um it was it's a woman-owned club so i loved that for one and two it's a very empowering place for women to be at least that's what it looked like from the outside Mm -hmm. you know and so i was like okay so it seems like it's safe like it's not going to be creepy as far as like management goes Mm -hmm. um and yeah i i was very hmm, how do i put it my personality that everyone knew me for around that time when i was 18 Nobody ever expected me to be a stripper because I was a straight A student. I was working all the time. I used to model throughout high school. And so I was a very good girl, Mm -hmm. very, very, very good girl. And by the time I got into the strip club, I remember telling my mom, she was like, she was, okay, the the look on her face, she was like, like, really? Like, I mean, okay, I guess if that's what you want to do. And, um, I remember kind of keeping a secret from my dad (laughs) because, you know, dads are different with their daughters. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I go in the night that I told my mom, she's like, just be safe. You know, I still love you. I'm here for you. If anything, call me if anything. And yeah, pulled up to the strip club and I loved it. I loved it. I'm very, I'm still very good friends with the owner, um, to this day after five years and basically loved everything about stripping i went i grew a lot during that time between the time i started stripping to getting into porn and i'm glad i had that buffer time Mm. because um basically it was a three-year difference or Mm -hmm. three-year span of time before i joined the industry and it's crazy how much growing up can still be done within those three or just three years. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when you're young too. I mean, you, yeah. I feel like you never start, stop growing. I feel like I'm no, different right. than I was three years ago myself, but especially like exactly. your twenties, you change so much, yeah. so much, so, so much. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I'm glad I had that time, but pretty much when COVID came around, shut the clubs down. I'm like, great. What am I going to do now? So I heard about OnlyFans. <laughs> mm. and What's then, that? I know. Who is she? I've never heard of that before. <laughs> but um, I decided to try it because I had grown a tiny bit of following. By tiny bit. I mean like a thousand followers. Mm-hmm. Um, just throughout my little stripper Instagram. And they're like, hey, you should make an OnlyFans. Like I'm really interested in seeing you know, more of your stuff because... We can't come to see you in the club anymore. And I'm like, oh, okay. So tried it out little by little. Started off with, like, by posting like pics in um, lingerie. Mm-hmm. Eventually progressed to nudies. Because, you know, I felt like it was a little safe spot for me. Because mm-hmm. it was in my control, you know, mm-hmm. up to me, my boundaries, all that. And eventually led up to me making my first solo masturbation video. And... Yeah. Since then, I was like, wait, something clicked. I'm like, this is hot. I really actually enjoy this. And I think part of that was because, I mean, back then I didn't really know, but I kind of have a thing for, what's that that word called? There's a word. Exhibitionism. Mm-hmm. Or exhibitionist. Yeah. I mean, that would make yeah. sense, especially like being a stripper is a very exhibitionist yes. job. I mean, very yeah. much so. Yeah. And aside from the dancing part, I mean, I love it. And I love being sexy mm-hmm. and I guess sharing it with other people. And like, being appreciated for that. Yeah. yeah you being, know, like getting that positive feedback yeah, from people. It, it feels good, especially when it's something that I enjoy, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it just felt it felt right. And so I ended up recording my first boy girl. Um, and then since then, um, back then I was editing all of my own porn. And so uh, as I was editing, I was watching myself. I was like. You know, I look really happy, like <laughs> getting fucked on camera. And I was like, why don't I go pro? And then, yeah, one thing led to another. I started making my stripper Instagram more into, I guess, like my stage presence mm-hmm. as an as a creator, more mm-hmm. instead of a stripper. And so I started promoting like new videos that I put out or 
you know, different things to expect. I get all dressed up in little outfits, you know, sexy outfits as creators do. Um, <laughs> but eventually I ended up following another stripper I had found on the internet. And she happened to be a part of one of the agencies that I used to work for. Mm -hmm. And I guess they saw me liking or commenting on one of her pictures. And then they reached out to me. And I was like, fuck it. Let's let's do it. Let's shoot some porn. Awesome. Yep. And I flew out days after signing the contract. And it didn't really hit me until I got to my first set, which was so I want to hear about because there's a lot of firsts here that we've like skipped yes. over and I want to hear there's more detail lot. about them. So the very first time that you stripped in mm. a club, tell mm. me about that. Like, how were you feeling before you got on stage? How were you feeling when you were on stage? And like, how did you feel after? All right. OK, it's so funny because just thinking about it makes me like kind of relive it. And I'm getting like all jittery and like my hands are literally getting sweaty right now. But I remember Oh, okay, it's terrible, but I pulled up to the club. I was supposed to be there 10 minutes earlier than I was. And, um, you know, boss wasn't there yet, at least so I thought, because I texted her when I got there. She's like, okay, I'm pulling up soon. So basically, um, she pulls up right next to me, like right after I put my car in park. And so I'm late my mm -hmm. first night. Mm -hmm. And she takes it really serious. Like, it's super pro at the um, club I was working at. And so she, I could see the little look in her eyes. She's like, why are you late on your first date? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, fuck. But everything went okay. She pretty much guided me on, like, things to do. And um, as far as, like, dancing goes, like, she said, just do your thing. Like, feel, your, or feel yourself, you mm -hmm. know. Do what makes you feel sexy um and then we'll see what happens after that and that was for my audition did you get to pick your song i didn't um i also didn't really think much of it um the club that i was dancing at it's called ballerinas by the way i love them i adore them so much it's, that's family so um i don't recall choosing my songs because it's a very i would say their playlist is urban mm -hmm. like um you know trap hip-hop mm -hmm. all that r b so I was cool with the vibes that mm -hmm. I, you know, that I was hearing throughout my paperwork slash application yeah. process. And so, ooh, I remember getting dressed in the locker room and I am so, so nervous. I'm shaky a little bit. I'm really wondering, like, I wonder how it's going to be. It was slow. I think it was a Sunday night. And, you know, there, there's only one customer in there. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so, like, I'm still having all these nerves. And thankfully, like, the girls, that are the dancers there, they were really nice. They were like, oh, you're so beautiful. Like, they're complimenting me and whatnot. And I was like, oh, thank you. Like, that's really sweet. It's a little comforting um, hearing that in a club because I soon learned later, um, years after that, when I started to travel for dancing, that girls aren't the nicest in strip clubs all the time. Mm -hmm. And so it's good to have that kind that first of experience be, yeah yeah so anyways now it's time to go on stage and get naked for four songs okay and one person yeah one person yeah <laughs> yeah um you know i really got into it because i, I mean i was feeling it you yeah. know the the stage had mirrors um all around it and so kind of you're dancing with yourself in a mirror for most of it um and I made $60 off my, that one customer oh, on wow. my first stage set. And I forgot to take my bottoms off. It was a full nude clip. So I, was, <laughs> I got a little scolding afterwards. He's like, eh, you didn't take your bottoms off. I was like, I know. I'm so sorry. I forgot. But look. <laughs> $60. Yeah, because I was busting my ass at this, um, this little boutique store from back home. Um, aside from modeling, uh, I had a regular you know nine to five job mm -hmm. um in retail and oh, goodness i remember it felt like i was overworking for the amount that i was getting paid and my personality i guess if i'm gonna do a job i'm gonna do it right like mm -hmm. as it, to the best of my ability and so i would make sixty dollars i think i guess 
not even in a full day's or maybe in a full days of work. I don't mm-hmm. remember what my wage was back then, but basically it was the sixty dollars was enough to make me like, holy fuck, I made this much money in a matter of like fifteen minutes. Mm-hmm. Like and I would have to work hours just to get this. Yeah. And so yeah. And retail is a pretty thankless job I worked at. Yeah. 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 It's probably- a lot of customer complaining. Yeah. A lot of customers really not appreciating no. your store. Yeah. 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 I feel it. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I've also been there. But yeah, since then, since my first stage set, I remember after it, um, yeah, I was thrilled. I was excited. I was like, holy shit, it wasn't that bad. Because mm-hmm. um, I was I was a little nervous. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing exactly. I've never really danced at all other than like hula and tahitian Mm -hmm. and a lot of that has to do with the hips i mean i dance like bachata with my mom then whenever we're at family parties but like i mean that kind of helped i guess taught me how to move a little bit and like have rhythm yeah i feel like that's the most important because honestly more so now have you learned like all the pole tricks and stuff like that (laughs) no (laughs) you'd think after five years of dancing i would I would be pretty bomb at the pole, but I'm not. I only know like two or three tricks. Mm-hmm. And that's because I, I'm i good at my floor work. And yeah. I, I, like, I prefer to be interacting with the people. Mm-hmm. I've learned that I make more money that way yeah. um, when I interact with the customers at stage. So, yeah, I was like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Plus, I was always I'm, – I'm still as tall as I am back yeah. then – I was back then – and I would kick light structures. I would kick people occasionally <laughs> whenever I did try to go on the pole. So I was like, mm, okay, you know, yeah. I, I can live without it. I, I got by without it. Yeah. So I'm like, hmm. no, my only concern is that now my knees hurt a lot easier. So yeah. <laughs> fuck. I know. It's a lot of, I took a pole dancing class and I was so bruised the next day. Whole, it looked mm-hmm. like someone kicked, yeah. like beat me up. I was yeah. like, how can anyone do this and then model because you're covered in bruises? No, literally. And I remember, oh, my God. So I didn't tell my my nine to five that I was going in, you know, to mm-hmm. work or to strip at night. But the next day I came into work, I was covered in bruises on all like all over my shins, my knees. And I remember my manager looking down. She's like, like, I could tell she noticed she yeah. never really said anything. And so, yeah. I thought maybe you just had a wild night or something like that. I wonder. I, to this day, like, I wonder what she was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, it was great. It was it was very great. I really, I look back on it and just think of how grateful I felt. And it was a little, it was humbling, you know? Because mm-hmm. then there were nights I made, like, <laughs> over two grand at that club. And that was before I even went to Vegas. Vegas, there's a lot more money there. Yeah. And so that $60, it was something that I always held on to to stay humble. Mm-hmm. Be like, um, it's on the, to sorry, to stay humble on the bad nights. Yeah. Because there are days where like you'll make 200. Um, I've only left a negative once. And that's something that not a lot of people can say. Um, it's, common for that to happen actually um because you have to give part of your earnings to the club right mm -hmm. yeah and there's a house fee you have to pay and so for every dance um you owe like a percentage of that dance to the club but is that on top of so wait on top of the house fee what's the house fee that's just that's just to work for the night oh wow Mm -hmm. and so it also depends on depends on the club depends on where you are Mm -hmm. what time you show up sometimes they up the prices depending on the hour Mm-hmm. raise the prices not up sorry <laughs> i guess it makes sense because those are probably the times that you would make more money there's more customers and more people would want to work that mm-hmm. that time yeah. yeah but the way our club to work is a set time you show up at this time it's a flat fee right 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 yeah. gotcha mm-hmm. all right guys we're gonna take a quick commercial break when we come back we're gonna talk about giselle's very first pro scene which oh. we kind of teased a little bit uh so hang tight we will be right back guys do you sometimes lack confidence in the bedroom We've all had those nights where we get too nervous or maybe we just had too much to drink. There's nothing worse than not being able to put the stick shift and drive when you need it the most. But have no fear, because RexMD is here spreading Christmas cheer even when you've had a few too many beers. 
RexMD is FDA approved and the most trusted leader in men's telehealth. They have sponsored this episode to help you always be prepared. RexMD has made it simple, easy, and cost effective to help all the men out there last longer and feel more confident in the bedroom. RexMD makes getting generic branded Viagra or Cialis easy. Everything's online, even the prescription, and they deliver it discreetly to your door. No waiting rooms, no embarrassing trips to the doctor, no insurance, and no copays. Take advantage of their best deal that they've ever offered and save up to 90% and only pay $2 per dosage with our exclusive link. Go to rexmd.com slash holly for this deal. rexmd.com slash holly for up to 90% off. Give the gift of pleasure this holiday season with RexMD. Hey guys, we're back. Okay, so tell us about your first pro scene. What company was it for? Oh, it was for Net Video Girls. And I had the same butterflies that I did when I was ha- or when I had my first night dancing. So it was a very similar experience. However, I had the butterflies driving to the club and I had the butterflies for my first pro set literally 10 minutes before shooting. And that was it? So yeah. you, you weren't like nervous about it before then? So no, really I really like wasn't, it. which is funny because I guess I was like, you know what, I've, I've, done, I've shot my own porn, you know? Yeah. I, that's yeah. just so you had some experience. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, I was like, wait, I flew to California to shoot porn. I'm about to do it. It's, a lot of people are going to see it. And then like only 10 minutes before shooting did I realize all of that, like all of that fully sunk in mm-hmm. and kicked in. So I remember shaking, or I tried to hide it at least. Yeah. Um, when we started filming the video, because there's a little intro, they make it like a little interview kind of thing. And I remember being so nervous, and the sex ensues, and then at the end of it, I was like, "That's it? That's all?" <laughs> and they're like, "Oh my god, you're great!" I was like, "Wait, what? Really? Really?" Like I, I remember asking them like. Immediately after finishing, I was like, is there anything I could have done different? Like, how did I do? Like, I was looking for that mm-hmm. um, for criticism. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they're like, no, really, everything was great. Like, you're going to do great in this industry. I was like, oh, OK, cool. I, like, I was really glad about that. And whew, I have learned so much more since yeah. then. Yeah, I so bet. much more. Net Video Girls, is that one of the video the sites that you like work with the guy who owns it or did you work with another male Mm -hmm. performer it was a male performer okay um uh, i know i think mr lucky pov okay yes mr lucky pov is the one or the performer that i worked with okay yeah and um what have been some of your favorite scenes that you've done since you've been in the industry and come so far and learned so much well oh goodness I have so many. Um, let's see. Aside from our twisty shoot, um, I really, honestly, I loved the stripper one because mm-hmm. it, it was one of my fantasies. I've always wanted to fuck on stage, mm-hmm. like on a stripper stage. But then again, I think the only thing missing from that <laughs> was, of course, the people part. <laughs> right, right. But um, I felt it felt. Yeah, I felt like a bad bitch in that. And I loved it. Um, but let's see, what else? That was a girl girl. Love April or or Olsen. She's great. Um, what else is there? Okay, it's going to sound a little cliche because it was my first scene with Ramon. Mm-hmm. But that one I thoroughly enjoyed because uh, it was a BDSM shoot. And mm-hmm. that's something I am so into in Ooh. my personal life. Yes, I love it so much and yeah the things that happened before that even while we were shooting like the intro and all that to that scene it was so funny it was very memorable in the way that I've never experienced anything like what I did when I met him Mm -hmm. so there's that as well how so could you explain that yeah I could (laughs) it's so corny (laughs) Oh my god. So by the time I met him, I was already like I think about a year in or so. So I've already, you know, shot with other people and it's not a personal thing at all, you know, it's work. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you're you're fucking on camera, but 
it doesn't really go beyond that mm-hmm. um as far as like if it's i don't know like there's no like feeling you're, yeah, you're no not you're, feelings. you're not no catching strings. feelings afterwards yeah 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 so it's like a no strings thing and basically <laughs> i remember i did my pretty girls i'm back in the little dressing room and he walks in and i melted like butter i tell everyone it was like like butter in a microwave like you know how it just goes mm-hmm. <laughs> that's exactly how i went like or God. Was that the first time that you saw him? Ever met him, yeah. Okay, so the first time you ever laid eyes on this man, or at least in person, because yeah, I'm yeah. sure you'd seen porn with him in it, was when he walked into that dressing room. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I, I honestly didn't even see any porn that he was in before either, because um, I didn't I didn't watch a lot of pro porn, I think. Mm-hmm. I did more. I mean, I've seen like a lot of Vixen, and, but I, yeah. I loved amateur stuff mm-hmm. um, on Pornhub and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But let's see. I Yeah. I melt. I immediately just felt like this wash of like ease slash calm mm-hmm. when I met him, and I don't know how to. It's weird. It's I never believed in first or love at first sight until I met him, mm-hmm. and I thought it was the corniest shit ever. I was like. Ew, what am I feeling right now? Why am I feeling it? Like, we just met each other. I have, I know nothing about him. He knows nothing about me. But yeah, it was, it was interesting. And of course, the chemistry was there. Yeah. You know, we were, you know, very flirty um, in between takes. Uh, Yeah, it was such a strange feeling. Um, Yeah, it's everything. Mmm. All my stress, everything I ever thought I knew about love mm-hmm. just changed. And then, fucking, so then, it was weird. Yeah. I mean, from someone I know that, that was feeling. very skeptical about even finding love in the first place. Mm-hmm. And um, I had gone through like a really bad relationship experience just as a stripper. And I, he made me believe for a second that. I wasn't worthy of love because mm-hmm. of what I did. And that really, really, really got to me. Like, I'm sure. And uh, yeah, there's this whole that between that three year thing between porn and stripping, mm-hmm. I went to the, to the psych ward because I had really, I had a lot of mental growth to do. Mm-hmm. Um, struggled with depression, all of that, which sucks, but I wouldn't be the person I am today if I hadn't gone through that. Yeah. But, Anyways. I mean, our struggles make us who we are. Right, right. You know what I mean? If life was always just easy and there was never any bumps in the road, like, you don't, then you don't grow. So it's right. like those struggles are, they suck when they come up, but they end up being kind of like our greatest gifts. Yes, because I be- totally believe I would not be here if I hadn't done that. If I hadn't taken myself to the psych ward because I felt unsafe with myself. Mm-hmm. If I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have been here. I wouldn't have gone to therapy and that's something that I advocate for because that just saved my life literally mm-hmm. alongside you know medication but yeah and I'm, I'm in a way I'm grateful for that dark time because yeah. it taught me so much it taught me gratitude it taught me how to really see things in a different light mm-hmm. and to appreciate things for what what they are and when they are just everything around me yeah so yeah uh that's why when i found ramon i was really focused on myself Mm -hmm. and my healing and really finding my own peace within myself and learning to love myself that little self-love self-care thing that was my self um my little self-care era and i do feel that like the right people walk into your life when you've when you're in that place mm-hmm. where you're taking care of yourself and you're starting to, you know, work on yourself. That's yeah. when I feel like the universe is like, okay, you're ready for this, for this thing. Because I mean, I know, you know, for me, if I had met my current husband many years ago before I got my shit together, like that relationship well, never would have worked out. Yeah. I totally believe that. And, um, cause that's kind of where things are with us. Like, if he had met me, he would not have tolerated me for, like, two days. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But basically, I remember before even meeting him, I 
was trying to replace the love that I had before. And so I was actively searching for it and realized that nothing ever went well or nothing good ever came out of searching for it. Mm -hmm. So eventually I accepted that. Let's stop looking. Let's take care of this. Let's take mm -hmm. care of me first. Yeah. And I always tell people it, it comes when you're not looking for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is so absolutely true. Yeah. So then after the scene, mm -hmm. like, did you get his number? Like, how did you, did. you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I got his number uh, and <laughs> we were supposed to go out to eat afterward, but he's a busy man. He's still to this day. He's always freaking working. And he had to go head to testing last minute. So he was like, oh, it's OK. Uh, uh, I'll just text you later. And I was so bummed. I was like, fuck, OK, whatever. It's not like I wanted to spend time with you or anything or like get to know you better or whatever. And so he ended up coming over after that. Then we hung out. He bought me a little, like a little box of chocolates, too. Oh it was God. so cute. I was like, I love chocolates. How did you know? But um. I mean, that's pretty easy. I think everyone loves chocolate, but yeah. <laughs> I appreciated the little gift, um, you know, and since then, yeah, I think he slept over the first night. I was going to say, have you guys been kind of inseparable since then? Mm -hmm. And to a lot of people, that might sound like a red flag, but we, we were literally inseparable. Um, we didn't want to be away from each other for like, like a whole week, <laughs> pretty much. And yeah. I mean, that sounds like love to me. It was weird because even I was like, I, I, well, I've never experienced anything like that where I felt that, that, what is it, magnetism? Is that a word? Mm -hmm. It's that magnetic feeling. Yeah. Like I wanted to be around this person and he wanted to be around me too. And so we just went with the, uh, yeah, went with the flow. Yeah. And since then we've been flowing since. So how is it dating? <laughs> I know that like, you know, so many performers you know have different experiences with dating i know it can mm. be hard for a lot of people because of what you do mm -hmm. um what's your what's it like dating another performer in the industry so um it's honestly it depends on your boundaries mm -hmm. uh that's one thing that for a while um not for a while i mean we we both understood or we looked at work as work it's a job we can we separate it from anything personal mm -hmm. and so that helps a lot in terms of our relationship and we understood that at the very beginning um because we did meet at work right and then our our fling i guess um was an exception in, on both of our ends like mm -hmm. we didn't really ever have that before mm -hmm. and so we just followed it it sounds to me like you're clear and communicative about your boundaries yes and i think that's the most important thing in yeah. any relationship mm -hmm. um really? do you guys ever have like jealous it, jealousy issues and if that comes up like how do you address that so we don't have any jealousy issues because we're into watching each other have sex with other people oh well that's helpful yeah oh yeah it helps a ton <laughs> that's very helpful right and i feel like that's why we're able to be so chill about it yeah um but yeah we've never really had any I don't think we've had jelly sea issues. No. Is there anything that you guys find that you struggle with with each other? Oh. With like, is it like, it could even be just like pressures of work, like right. working a lot. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't even have to necessarily yeah. tie to sex specifically. Right. So we actually do have that come up pretty often because he, one, he's always he's always working. He's mm -hmm. consistently getting booked. Um, I mean, when you're like a reliable male performer you will get booked yeah when you're good looking <laughs> and like you know you tick all those boxes which ramon does mm -hmm. you will get booked all the time yeah and he knows what he's doing he knows yeah. how to move the girls oh he's great like light. he knows everything yeah i mean when everything. i have ramon like i can go take a fucking nap yeah because he's just he's gonna, gonna take carry the, the girl. scene he's gonna spin her every <laughs> which way he's gonna give me like he's gonna give me his favorite position which right. is holding the girl up and fucking her which uh -huh. i i thought was everybody's least favorite position because it's so much work for the guy mm -hmm. no he puts in work yeah absolutely <laughs> he really does yeah so there are times where like or i have a streak where i'm busy and mm -hmm. so sometimes uh we aren't able to have sex with each other and that's also something we both enjoy like mm -hmm. we enjoy having that time for, or for each other with you know with each other and 
So there's only been a few times where we had a little struggle where we were like, we really want each other and we couldn't really have each other because one person would be either really drained or really tired or sore even because mm-hmm. men can get sore from having too much sex totally. too. There's a lot of friction it. involved. I've seen it. I'm yeah. like, ow, that, your penis looks sore. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. But same way, I mean, when our pussies take enough beatings, they get swollen and red and painful. And, you know, a break is necessary sometimes. Yeah. And I'm glad that we also understood that part of our job mm-hmm. because we need that rest time. Yeah. And um, that's the only thing that probably sucks about performing is that we get – times where we're too tired to have sex with each other yeah because you're have too busy being paid to have sex with other people yeah i get that and i'm like oh i miss my penis <laughs> <laughs> that's my penis i don't want anybody else it's only yours do you guys make sure to like take like time off of work the both of you so that you guys can have like little kind holidays of. together kind even of. staycations yeah i mean like honestly we also enjoy each other as is mm-hmm. without the sex right And so that helps a lot. Like we're able to, you know, abstain from it if necessary, because there are times where being in a couple or being a couple with both people as performers, it can be a little at a disadvantage when it comes to the exposure Mm -hmm. of STIs and whatnot, because it's double, double the risk, basically. Right, Right. And so there are times where one of us had an STD and then we'd be medicated and we'd have to refrain from having sex from each other right, right. and then of course. it's like when you want something bad or so bad um and you can't get it it makes you want it even more mm-hmm. which sucks but we power through it we we do the best we can and yeah. just really spend some quality time together and which i also don't complain about <laughs> because i love to do you know just just to be around and we'll play video games or watch movies, snuggle in bed, or we'll go out with the or to the beach with the puppies. Like it's it, it's it's good that we have both such a great relationship, even without the sex. Mm-hmm. Like a good chemistry. Just yeah. a good want I like want to be around each other no matter if it's sexual yeah. or not. And you guys are married. Yes. Ha- have you guys talked about are you interested in starting a family at any point? Uh, maybe one day along the lines. We'll see. We'll see because I know he wants he wants a baby. Mm-hmm. He's 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 very he's he's very fatherly figure. Like mm-hmm. as far as um, just the way I've seen him care for my nieces and nephews back home, mm-hmm. it's adorable. Yeah, it gives me baby or baby fever like hell. But no, I'm not ready. I I still feel like a kid myself. I have a little more growing to do before I'm able to feel like I. Can raise a kid yeah yeah it's a lot. i can it's a tell lot. you that it absolutely is a lot and yeah. i waited like i mean how old are you i'm 23 oh god yeah oh girl yeah no yeah. like 10 15 yeah no i'm, I'm like i'm so cool long from right now. now right i'm so cool. yeah yeah I, 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 and the thing is like he can have kids whenever yeah you know women we're different we have a biological window but mm-hmm. i mean i had violet at, i was 41 when i had her oh, yeah. so you know you've got time Right, 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 right. Yeah, I am in no rush. No, no, no rush and it's a big all. decision to make. So. Huge. I'm like having two puppies. Sometimes is a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's not. It's not even close to having a kid. Ever. Yeah, I mean, because you know they're actually dependent on you. My dogs they just do whatever they want. Right. The only things they come to us for is food and walks. Yeah, you <laughs> and just like throw cuddles. your kid in the backyard for like the afternoon. Because right. They're annoying. <laughs> I wish I could do that. <laughs> just put him in the kettle. Just get in there. Shh. Right. There's a bone. Like quiet. Yeah, yeah. And they and we've raised our dogs so that they love their their crate is their safe space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that helps a lot. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. It's it's a lot easier for sure. But how, it has its does, times. How does your family feel about him? And did they know? <gasps> I'm assuming that they know what you do for a living. They do, and they're very supportive. Very that's, very supportive. That's um, fantastic. So grateful. Because... Are you surprised that they had that reaction? Honestly, a little, not, but not really, because uh, it sounds like your mom was supported from the beginning with your oh, yeah. shipping anyways. Yeah, so yeah. it sounds like she's somebody who, yeah, you know, wants to be there for you regardless. Yeah, for sure. And I remember <laughs> a weekend, my dad found out real quick because my mom spilled the beans and he wouldn't talk to me for like a week. 
I mean, it was like a more like a like I'm mad at you. I don't want to talk to you kind of thing. Yeah. But eventually he came around. He's like, you're you're fine. Like as long as you're being safe. Yeah. Like, I still love you. Yeah. I gotta worry about it. Just take care of you. And yeah. So they're very supportive. Always been from the jump, pretty much, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> Minus great. that week time that my right, dad took, right. which is understandable because I was the good girl of the family. Mm-hmm. But uh, back to to how they feel about like Ramon. And- okay, that was a different story because we have a pretty decent sized age gap. Mm-hmm. How old is Ramon? Now? <gasps> He's forty eight. Okay, so we have a twenty eight or twenty five year difference. Okay, and so. I remember I was talking to my mom about him, I think, uh, within, like, the first month that we started talking. I was like, Mom, I met this really nice guy, and I don't know what it is about him, but something feels so right and interesting. I've never felt anything like it before. She's like, oh, okay, that's cool, that's cool. How old is he? I said, he's, like, 47. I was like, (laughs) and she's like, okay, I mean... Wow. <laughs> like, <laughs> she just had that surprise. She had that surprise, um, you know, expression. And she said, as long as you're happy, as long as he's taking good care of you and he supports you, um, I approve of it. Yeah. And that's how my entire mo- side of my mom's family was. Everyone was supportive as long as I was happy. Mm-hmm. And I remember I waited a little longer to tell my dad. Mm-hmm. Because Ramon's older than my dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So how much older is he than your dad? Oh, uh, he's like like three years. No, 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 no. Sorry, no, like five. Wow. Five. Yeah. It's... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So your dad's like my age or younger. Um. I'm yeah, 44. He, yeah, I, I think he's he's probably like one year younger or something. Your dad's younger than me. Yeah. I'm I'm going home. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, please. <laughs> I'm done. Oh. oh god, I didn't remember getting to no, that I stage mean, of my career because I've been doing this for like 25 years. Right. When uh, models that I work with, when their parents started being the same age as me or sometimes younger, and I was like, uh, I'm so old. No, so no, it's no. just kind of funny. I mean, my parents had me when I when they're like 18, 19. So I'm. Yeah. Thank you for trying to make me feel better. Yeah, it did not work, but oh, thank I'm you. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> oh, oh, man. I, I thought it would help. No, I'm just kidding. I'm totally teasing you. It's fine. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm okay about my age. It's just sometimes moments like that. Cause when, it really when hits you. I'm yeah. Like, when I'm sitting here like talking to you and when I work with you, I feel like we're like the same age. And well, then it's moments like that that I'm reminded that we are 100% not the same age. No, wait. But I mean, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, I that's another thing about age I feel like um it really doesn't matter I think I feel like personality shines through beyond age yeah I mean there's definitely like something to be said about you know growing up and I mean we talked about how much you grew up in three years for mm-hmm. sure so but there are definitely people who are like older than their years oh right right so, right for sure for sure yeah. and I feel like that's the thing that's why our relationship works because mm-hmm. Ramon sees that in me a little bit. Like mm-hmm. I know what I want. Mm-hmm. And um, that's something a lot of people my age can't really say. Yeah. So I've also witnessed a lot mm-hmm. before meeting him that also grew me up a little bit or aged me mentally at least. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, I remember when I told my dad that I was seeing someone that's like 47 years old. <laughs> he's like, what? What are you doing with a man that old? <laughs> and um, I was like, no, no, no. He, he treats me really good. He treats me like a princess, dad. Like, I swear, like, he he's an amazing man. And he was like, he made the stinkest face. Yeah. <laughs> Just the stinkest face. And he's like, okay, well, whatever. Whatever. Just as long as you're happy. <laughs> yeah. And eventually he didn't end up meeting Ramon until Christmas and um when I told him about him it was like April Mm -hmm. and he was always always very put off about meeting him like Mm -hmm. he's like nah I don't I don't want to he's gonna have to call me dad 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 just like making jokes like that. And so yeah. how'd the meeting go? It went great. Yeah. It went great. My um I, the thing is that we have an uncle in our family where um he's the one that truly decides if someone's other half is going to stick around in the family. Okay. And so he's he's very intimidating. He's scary. He's spooky. Like he's just he will do a soul stare into your eyes and be like, Do you love my niece? What what are your plans with her? Like like Yeah. All that stuff. Like a soul stare. And he Ramon didn't hesitate one bit. He yeah. said, I really love her. Um, I plan to be with her for a long time. And I told her whenever she's ready to get married, I'm ready. And I was like, my heart melted when he said that. And I was like, okay, all right, that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I got my uncle's blessing, it made me realize there's nothing my dad can say. Because my dad loves that uncle, loves that uncle to mm-hmm. death. And um, so once you got the uncle stamp of approval. Yeah. Your dad fell in line. Yeah. Pretty and Ramon's much. a very like charming man. I'm sure that he mm-hmm. charmed your family. And oh, he hell. charmed your dad. And I'm no. sure your dad. Yeah. Liked and, him. and it's so cute. Um, my friends and family from back home, they watch the way he looks at me. The wa- he watch or they watch the way he cares for me. He takes care mm-hmm. of me. And he's like, oh, my God, like you can literally see how much he loves you. I'm like. It made me it makes me so sappy every time. Yeah. Ew. And yeah. I'm not I'm not a sappy, lovey dovey person either. Like I was never like a romantic really until I met him and figured out what all those feelings were, you know? Yeah. I was like, ew, it's so corny yeah. and cheesy and gushy gushy. I know, but it's ew. also like it's wonderful. Cute. It is wonderful. It is, because it's very I would say it's very rare to come upon it. Mm-hmm. But then again, like I said earlier, if you're trying to look for it, it's might yeah. not happen. It, I don't know. That at least that's what happened with me. Well, I mean, that's I think that's what makes it so special when you do fall in love with somebody because it's not that easy to find. Yeah. To find the right person. I definitely didn't find it by looking. So Yeah. So when it happens, it's, it's it beautiful. should it should mean something. It's yeah. Beautiful. You should have all those happy feelings. Yeah. You embrace them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I'm so sorry. I keep going off, but meeting went great. Dad loves him and good. He knows I'm in good hands now. That's great. So like <laughs> my both my both sides of my family uh, know that I'm in good hands so much so that they don't really call to check in as much. And my type, my family, we're more of a love from a distance kind of thing. Like mm-hmm. we know we're we're busy, we're being adults, mm-hmm. and so we'll call each other like every now and then. And yeah, they have so much faith in him that they used to call me like weekly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like every other month. Okay. And we we text in between the calls, obviously. Yeah. But, you know, they know That's I'm fair. in good hands, so. That's also good to feel that my family is supports yeah, him, yeah. supports your career. Sounds like you, yeah. you're in pretty good shape right now. Pretty much, everything's falling into place. That's awesome, and I I really love that kind of falling into place. I don't know, uh, yeah. Just based on what our last conversation was before the camera, right? Yeah. Understand, <laughs> understand. Yes, our secret, our pre, little secret pre podcast mm-hmm. conversation. Um, all right, Giselle, well, thank you so much for coming in. It was a pleasure yeah. to have you. We're going to do a little, like, bonus Q&A for my Patreon members yeah, after sure. this, if that's okay. Sounds yeah. good. A few extra minutes to get to know Giselle in a, a little more intimately. Um, and, of course, you know, join my Patreon, patreon.com slash Unfiltered to access that exclusive content. Um, but for the rest of you, Giselle, can you tell everybody where they can find you online? Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Instagram, you can find me at x. Oh, sorry. Jizzy Blanco, G-I-Z-Z-Y-B-L-A-N-C-O. I had to think about it because I got deleted twice and got to figure out which username I'm using now. But um, Twitter and TikTok is XO Giselle XO, XO G-I-Z-E-L-L-E XO. Um, only fans, uh, my one and only sites that I use to connect with um, fans and subscribers, uh, XO Giselle.com. Super easy. Yeah. Where's the jizz on my face handle? <laughs> That's on your Twitter, right? It was, and then I changed it. You changed it. Mm-hmm. You no longer hold the jizz on my face. Oh no, I still love facials. Loved. Oh, I know, but, but I mean, I don't hold the handle, handle anymore. I oh, did. it was. It was like my little. Um, it wasn't my username. It was my. It was like your title. The title, the, yeah. Like your name. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah, remember yeah, the yeah. first time I looked you up on Twitter, I saw that. I'm like, 
that's funny. No, <laughs> I know. And I love it. And I want to go back to it. <laughs> Now it's Jizzy loves you because I've I've got I did a little soul searching so I really made it a priority to like give good energy and yeah. send love out because there's a lot of people that need it yeah and so I change it to but Jizzy you, loves as you. long as you still love being jizzed on your face that's, yes as long as we know that deep down you are still the same person. very much so <laughs> very much so <laughs> oh my god I love it. And you guys can find me on Instagram and on Twitter at Holly Randall. Um, I'm still on TikTok. They actually deleted me. We really? And then they reinstated me immediately. As they um, should. I don't think you really did it. They deleted two videos of mine for community guideline violations, which I appealed and they still kept them deleted. One was literally Aiden Starr talking about how she likes to wear latex because it fits her well. Right. There's absolutely nothing sexual about, about it she just said that she liked wearing latex it was very tame i'm very careful mm -hmm. and the other one was um venus guy talking about what her perfect first date would be same what thing she was like walk on the beach dinner she's wearing like a little jumper yeah mm, that's tiktok thanks for you. tiktok anyways but yeah. i'm still there for now it's uh at holly randall and filtered on tiktok um so <laughs> come follow me there because who knows if I will be there tomorrow. <laughs> Hanging on by the skin of my yeah. teeth. It's like me and Instagram. Yeah. Me and Instagram don't have a good relationship. Yeah. Social media is it's hard. It's not fun for sex workers. But um, <laughs> if you are listening to this on the audio version, make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. I don't think that's getting deleted anytime soon. They seem YouTube seems to like me. So make sure that you're following me there. Um, I will be taking next week off, um, taking a little week break between Christmas and New Year's. So I hope you guys have an amazing holiday season. I'll be back the week after. So have a great one. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>